Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. It is Friday morning, everybody. The weekend is here. Week number seven in the NFL has already started. Last night, the Saints versus the Jaguars. You know, it's kind of amazing because I learned something last night. One of those things that they don't talk very much about. And I'm surprised that they talked about it before the game. That Trevor Lawrence, going into that game, had 45 turnovers in 42 games in his career. Huh. You mean generational talented players? Number one draft picks turn the ball over? Yet they don't talk about it too much. I remember how, I'm old enough to remember how, not that long ago, I remember people like Colin Cowherd saying the Cowboys shouldn't resign Dak Prescott. They should let him walk and trade for Derek Carr. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at Derek Carr last night, it was kind of crazy because Derek Carr throws a pass about 10 yards past the bench and then proceeds to yell at his receiver that he ran the wrong route. Literally, literally, Derek Carr is terrible. Throwing into double coverages, throwing interceptions, looking like ass ass. But we don't talk about that. Micah Parsons seems to have set off a bit of a firestorm. In a way, Micah Parsons, I'm not sure it was the best thing for Micah Parsons to call everybody out because it seems like it's given him extra stuff to talk about. Literally, without the Dallas Cowboys, there is no conversation out there. There is none. The things that's or the thing that is crazy to me, and everybody always say, "Well, you're just a Dak Prescott defender. You just, you know, love Dak Prescott. You don't love the Cowboys." No, it's not that. I know Dak Prescott has faults. Dak Prescott has bad games. Dak Prescott is not perfect. But there is no player in the NFL that is perfect. There is no player out there that is infallible. There is none that could live up to the standards that Cowboy fans have, or actually the talking heads have, about Dak Prescott. Other quarterbacks have bad games, bad throws, lose games. Yet, for whatever reason, they don't get the flack. Can you imagine if Dak Prescott were Justin Herbert and had lost to Justin Herbert twice? We would be hearing, you know, oh my God, Dak Prescott, he's not on the same level. Oh, we do hear that all the time. Justin Herbert, nah, okay. Eh, not too much. Here's an interesting one listening to uh, Get Up from a couple days ago. And, and you tell me. Right, so let me fast forward a little bit. Down the aisle with his wife for the Chicago Bulls entrance music. Gotta remember my idea. I'm, I'm more than happy to take credit for it. Yeah, so I Okay, let's get on to Justin. That's pretty cool. Uh, Monday Night Football last night. Conventional wisdom is let's talk about the Cowboys, et cetera, et cetera. And we've done that today. But but we've taken a little different approach on this this morning. Why does Justin Herbert not get critiqued like other great quarterbacks? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Why does he not get Because his numbers always put – I mean, I, I, I guarantee – I don't know what his numbers are right now. Like, he's a top-10 quarterback right now. Like, he's he? got nine – oh, guaranteed. Like, if you looked at his numbers, his stats, all that kind of stuff, I bet you I bet you he's – what's he got? He's got almost – he's got 10, t 10 touchdowns. How many interceptions? Look, yesterday was the second in, I, uh, pick, right? Mm -hmm. I remember them saying that on the on the, on the the cast. But, I mean, when you look at it, that's, that's going to be the deal. People are going to look at it and go, well, his numbers produce. He does this. The numbers are always going to tell you, um, you know, that he's going to be in there. So where, where is he? You, you, you see? Yeah, he's, he's, he's 13th in right yards. Okay. He is. I'm looking at his touchdowns right now. He is ninth in touchdowns. So, yeah, yeah right around yeah. the top. So 10. he's going to. Yeah, man. So when you're talking about the NFL, there ain't many who can do it. So if a guy can do it and make these plays, they're always going to they're always going to defer to 
it's it's everybody around you. You know what I mean? Now, he hasn't had that, like, marked moment where he takes his team and just goes, you know, hey, this is what we're going to do with it. Part, In my opinion, though, part of that stuff is on the coaching side. You know what I mean? Like, Staley has been – you know, and I know he gets blasted. I'm not saying he gets a pass. But that does affect the quarterback, right? Like, a, a lot of those things that you're trying to do, a lot of the pressure that's trying to be, you know – it does go to the quarterback in those situations. And so I think people could say, okay, well, if a coach is going to act that way, you can't blame the QB. I think that's why he gets kind of the pass. Jeff, let's go to the team on the other side of that okay. game last night, the Cowboys. Going into last night, Dallas. So it's the team around him? The team around him is why he gets a pass. So Micah Parsons – basically called out all of the talking heads out there and said, you know, keep that same energy with the other quarterbacks because um, it's not the same. It's not the same whatsoever. And it seems like now all the talking heads out there are now talking about it uh, quite a bit on first take, undisputed, everywhere. And um, We'll see if anything changes on it. Because of what I saw last night from that game, Trevor Lawrence won the game. They won the game. Congratulations on that. But he has been a guy that's turned the ball over a lot. Expectations were he was the number one pick in the draft. Generational. I'm not sure I see that just yet. First playoff game. Four turnovers. Four turnovers in the first quarter. So I want to go to Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen has a great discussion on exactly this. Let's go to the tape. Okay, so I'm not asking to say leave Dak Prescott alone. By not, by all means, Dak needs to be criticized. The offense needs to be criticized. The coaching needs to be criticized. Of course, everybody needs to be criticized and looked at to see what their actual worth is. I'm just saying, keep it the same all the way across the board. Don't just pick out one guy to be the scapegoat or be the, the example of everybody else and then just bypass everybody else. But this is a great discussion. Let's listen in. I said this over and over and over and over again. If you take issue with a take, somebody on TV or the radio, yeah. and you have a problem with it, make mm -hmm. sure the individual you're talking about you're not feeding them. Isn't doing cartwheels over the fact that that person's name is being mentioned. You're giving oxygen mm -hmm. to the taker. That's it. That's it. If Dak Prescott had one more interception through week six that he had all of the previous year, in any year, Jenny obviously, hurts. if he had one more interception through week six that they had last year, it would be uh, an unprecedented string of interceptions that he was on. Yeah. But I'm just talking about any year. It would be a fire alarm fire. Of course. A fire alarm fire. And it is true that the 49ers did not have those players. But they did have a bunch of guys on defense who lost to P.J. Walker throwing down the field. There you go. But no one is. I haven't <clears throat> heard P.J. Walker's name mentioned on this show. No one's bringing up the fact that an XFL quarterback came in and beat the Mighty Niners. Yeah, well, like I said, it's yeah, true. There you so go. I get it. And you know, it's the thing that's annoying me the most since you put me in this chair is I, I as a Cowboy fan, will say to you sometimes. I think we talk about them too much. I understand. We move the needle and we get the clicks and everyone has an opinion. Mm -hmm. But the energy is never the same. Like you've got people making Instagram videos who want to be, you know, sports media personalities who are talking about the fact that, you know, a backup quarterback did what Dak Prescott couldn't do. What's that got to do with us? Like that, well, different week, different matchup, different rivalry. There was no rivalry. There was, you know, it's just. But then again, first of all, two things. One, you were in the chair. Two, mm -hmm. the oxygen mm -hmm. that feeds this whole thing that I just mentioned, you kind of feed it too. To me? Yes, you refer to the Cowboys as varsity. Again, you've got, you've got you velvet know, ropes around yeah. your, okay, but what, your, your what spot. What led to the velvet rope being put up? <laughs> the fact that everyone kept talking trash, and then I'm looking, I've got Carolina Panthers fans. I've got... Fans of teams who've never, their team has never seen success. Here's the other part of it, too, is what brings this on are clicks. 
but what brings it on is the people who click on it are cowboy fans and the flip side of it is is you have a remarkable home field advantage sometimes on road teams and road games oh yeah okay remember a couple years Cow- ago the cowboys went to the giants. giants the giants were already way out of it and the giants owners basically said hey you don't if you're selling your tickets <laughs> But what, we'll give you a free medium soda or something like that if you show up. Remember that one? Yeah, remember that one? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's a giant. I appreciate some appreciation. Right. Here's a, a here's medium, medium soda. Who ordered soda for that? Like, it's it's New Jersey. Jersey. Well, at least it wasn't a hockey league yeah. medium. It was like a real medium. But that's Sunday night. But, uh, you got Paul Rose. Pretty jacked, too. So, you know, seriously, though, you, you know, they, they were going silent snap count in SoFi. Mm-hmm. The charges were because there were so many Dallas Cowboy fans there. So that's part and parcel. Like, and, and I totally understand why Michael would say, "Hey, same intensity." Yeah. When Jalen Hurts stinks it up, why aren't you calling him out like that? Hey, when we lose games that we shouldn't, it's because we stink. Yeah. Not yeah. because of Here's all the players that that you we didn't have. You know, and and the the reason why it is is because Cowboy fans talk a lot. They show up in places mm-hmm. in full force that actually helps out, you know, the Cowboys. Let's put it this way. There weren't enough of that lady that got her 15 minutes of fame because she was so crazy rooting for the Chargers. They don't have enough of them in, so far. in Los Angeles. Also, also, here's why. Jalen Hurts is better than Dak. Okay? He was second in MVP last year. He equaled Dak's playoff wins last season. That's why we're not talking about it. The Eagles went to the Super Bowl last year. They just won the game. Dallas has yet to get out of the second round. So that's why... That's another reason. That's why he's not going to Here we go. Move the goalposts. Goal because for years, it was like, the Dallas can't go to the playoffs. So we get to the playoffs, it's like, oh, you can't win the game. That is true. Game. The fact that it's like, oh, we can't get past this round. So yeah. We're going to get past the second round this year. We'll lose in the conference finals. We'll be like, oh, you can't do that. And every time they do something, the... the, the, the what do you mean? It's just, it's just move. This guy and his... Second year, took a team in the Super Bowl. That's was, it, though. Was for, 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 it wasn't just him. Not in the NFL, man. If you got a quarterback, you can win the Super Bowl. There's only one quarterback. Okay, so let's – truth in advertising here. Okay, so we've heard, of course, what they just gave. They gave a pass to Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is a quarterback that could win the Super Bowl if he's on the right team. Like they just said, well, Justin Herbert, you know, it's the coach, Brandon Staley stinks, and the players around him and things like that, right? But here we've got Jalen Hurts, who has a team around him, has a team, best offensive line. Let's be real. They had the best offensive line. Lane Johnson is just an, uh, just, a, just another dude. I mean, he is that dude, okay? You had a great wide receiver. You had a great tight end. You had a good defense that failed to the Super Bowl. So he had a great team. I don't know that Jalen Hurts going to you know uh, the, to to the Cardinals or somebody like that is going to have the same success. So clearly, there's not things that are equal, and they're talking out of both sides of your neck. Justin Herbert, you're saying he doesn't have a team. Of course, Jalen Hurts, who has a team, it's just him and taking the Super Bowl. Come on now. Back out there, like I said the other day, who's truly elite. He wears 15 and plays in Kansas City. That's it. Everyone That's the else one. is on the same level as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I must agree with you in this regard, TJ. And we talked about this, I think, the, the week before I left for London. People do talk about the Cowboys as if not only did they miss the playoffs last year, yeah. they didn't make it and end Tom Brady's career. Yeah, yeah, they they won a playoff game. They actually won a playoff game. But to Chris's point, the reason why Hurts doesn't have the the DAC Nobody scorers cares. or the DAC intensity of scoring thrown on him is he actually did do what you've been waiting DAC to do. And that DAC did appear to have that sort of trajectory early on in his mm-hmm. tenure. And kind of, you know, again, similar to Hurts in a way where he comes from the SEC. I know Hurts did stop, have a, a, a season in Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, was drafted mm-hmm. to a spot where they already had a quarterback. Wentz in Philadelphia, Romo in Dallas. Why are they playing him? They turned to Hurts after Wentz proved inoperable. Mm-hmm. They turned to Dak because it looked like Romo needed an operation. Mm-hmm. And Dak took the bull by the horns in the same way Jalen Hurts has done yeah. in Philadelphia. Dak 
had at the time, as I wrote down in, in my book yesterday, uh, about you know almost a dozen games to start his career in the first three years of his career where he scored a touchdown on the ground and threw one in. He doesn't do that as much anymore. Mm -hmm. But he did have a similar trajectory as Hurts, and unfortunately for him, has not taken the Dallas Cowboys to where Hurts took Philadelphia in just mm -hmm. year two for him. His first full year is starter. Of course, his ankle snapped through. No, I, I get it, and, 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 and I understand. That but luck is part of sports. It's just a fascinating conversation, and I love seeing Micah Parsons cake for his guy I'm glad and make an it. interesting point. It is. It does have some valid. Yeah, there is some. There is some valid points. Oh yeah. Even the giant fan admits that. I mean, look, you, you got you got one of your biggest personalities in sports who his. Favorite thing to do is make a video every time Dallas loses. You can see <laughs> it's quite entertaining. You can see you know, the biggest and the loudest fan base. So yeah, sports shows are going to talk about them. Yeah, that but is you true. Know, you know, so I feel like, by the way, like a tennis match. You make a good point. You know, you know so <laughs> winning it all. What did you okay, if all right. So we're, we're losing the game. Okay, so the, the point of it. This is the point of it is just. And I say this not just to the people that are Cowboy haters, because it doesn't matter what they say about the Cowboys. They're going to hate us. So it just, you know, be that as it may. But as Cowboy fans, look at the totality of quarterback play across the NFL. Look at scoring across the NFL. All these things are down. And even Pat Mahomes has days that are up and down as well. This is the nature of the beast. There is no perfect quarterback. There is no perfect team. And the NFL now is a week-to-week -week league. You can look great one week, and you can look like ass-ass the next. Josh Allen shows that all the time. Week one, four turnovers. Next week, looking like a world beater. And that's the way it is in football. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon.